If you have ever felt at the center of someone's envy, you know very well that this is one of the most negative feelings that exist. Envy generates harmful effects on both those who experience it and those who are victims of it. So stay until the end because you will discover how to understand who is envious of you and you will receive three valuable tips on what to do to protect yourself and preserve your inner peace. But before continuing, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and share the video. Thanks to these small gestures, you will help us produce new valuable content every day for your personal growth. In a quiet Buddhist monastery, surrounded by colorful gardens and ancient trees, lived the old monk Haru, famous for his wisdom and deep knowledge of life and human emotions. One day, a young woman named Anita decided to spend a few days at the monastery to meet him and take comfort in his vast wisdom. Haru met the girl in the gardens and immediately understood that her heart was burdened by an increasingly unbearable burden. Then, since she didn't seem to have the courage to introduce herself, he asked her to open up to him. Master, in the last year of my life, I discovered that those whom I considered my friends perhaps were not so much so. From the day I published the results of my research, attracting the attention of the press and a company that quickly hired me, they either left or treated me differently. This makes me suffer a lot because I no longer know who to trust and I feel a loneliness that leaves me breathless. The old monk listened attentively and then began to share his wisdom with her. Life is like the wind that blows through the trees, Haru began. There are moments of calm and moments of storm. And it may happen that your light shines so brightly that it disturbs those who are still in darkness. But don't worry, you will learn to navigate these waters. While Anita already seemed more relieved than when she arrived in those mountains, Haru began to explain to the girl how to recognize envious people. Dear girl, the monk said sweetly, there are some signs you should pay attention to in order to discern who is envious of you and who is not. First of all, be careful with those who constantly criticize you. Envious people, when they see your success, may try to belittle it by always criticizing you. In essence, these people point out your flaws instead of recognizing your merits. They do it because, in this way, they try to hide their limitations and failures from themselves. They have no self-esteem. People may point out insignificant details to divert attention from your success. For example, if you got a promotion, they may focus on a small mistake you made instead of congratulating you on the achievement. Anita thought carefully, noticing how some classmates and friends criticized her choices for no apparent reason, while others congratulated her and smiled more frequently. A second sign we should pay attention to, Haru continued, is emulation. Those who envy you may try to emulate your life. Haru added, some envious people might copy your lifestyle to try to achieve the same success, but without admitting that they are doing it. For example, they might start frequenting the same places, adopting the same hobbies, or dressing like you, without ever openly acknowledging that they do it because they are influenced by you. Anita realized that some of her friends had suddenly developed the same interests and dressing style as her. The third sign thanks to which you can recognize those who envy you is the lack of transparency. Envious people, the master continued, hide information or may even lie. They maintain a veil of secrecy to prevent you from overcoming or judging them. Haru explained to Anita that envious people may hide their intentions or even lie to protect their egos. For example, they may hide crucial job information to impede your professional growth, maintaining an unfair advantage. Thinking carefully, Anita recalled a few occasions when she had been deliberately denied an opportunity to advance her career. That's why, he said to himself, beginning to understand more and more. And let's move on to sabotage or harm. Whoever is envious, said the monk, may try to sabotage your plans or even harm you. These people create obstacles, generate conflicts and try to make you suffer, hoping that you will weaken and fall behind. Haru told Anita stories of people who, out of jealousy, 
had sabotaged projects or spread harmful gossip to undermine the reputations of others. The more Haru talked, the more Anita remembered the circumstances she experienced in the last year of her life. For example, you remembered a project that a colleague ruined for no apparent reason, and from a friend of hers who, knowing of her interest in a boy, had conspired to prevent a date between the two. Some envious people can't hide their discomfort, Haru continued. They express it openly with words or gestures that indicate resentment or anger, so they are the easiest to expose. Master shared with Anita that there are cases where envy is so obvious that people cannot hide it. For example, when faced with their success, they openly show their resentment through sarcastic comments or hostile behavior. Anita thought about those two friends who, in the face of her professional successes, had reacted by suggesting that, to have been hired by such an important company, she must have the help of some powerful person. Haru continued, Another sure sign that someone envies you is when they rejoice in your misfortunes. Envious people, when something unpleasant happens to them, behave as if there was something to celebrate, the monk concluded. These people, when they encounter a difficulty, become so happy that they cannot completely hide their joy. So, Haru concluded, pay close attention to how they react when you face a negative challenge. Then there are those who mask their envy with seemingly benevolent advice, Haru added, presenting the seventh sign. Master explained to Anita that some envious people subtly try to make you feel guilty about your success. For example, advising you to slow down and enjoy life, trying to bring out guilt in the pursuit of your well-being. Anita reflected on previous advice that seemed positive but was actually motivated by envy. The last sign I want to warn you about, Haru said as the sun began to set behind the mountains, is related to mockery. The envious person may laugh at your ambitions or the dreams you are trying to realize, with the aim of undermining your self-confidence. Think about the people who, when you talk about your dreams and ambitions, respond with sarcasm or point out that certain goals are unrealistic. Anita recalled times when she had shared her goals only to receive sarcastic or mocking responses. Friends and family who, instead of encouraging her, tried to undermine her self-esteem. The girl, after hearing Haru's words, felt relieved. Now, although saddened by certain discoveries, she knew how to distinguish those who were envious from those who truly loved her. In conclusion, what is the moral of this story, and how can we defend ourselves from the envious? The moral of the story is clear. True strength lies in the ability to be yourself, regardless of the criticism or envy of others, and to protect yourself and your inner peace, it is best to follow Haru's advice. The number one tip, Haru told Anita, is don't let it get to you. Don't let criticism or attacks affect your self-esteem. Remember that other people's actions reflect their insecurities, not your worth. The second piece of advice is not to give importance to the opinions and judgments of the envious. Appreciate who you are and what you have achieved. Be sure of your path. The third tip is to maintain your authenticity. Do not give in to the temptation to behave like those who envy you. Be true to yourself, to your essence, and continue to cultivate your uniqueness. The conversation between Haru and Anita ended with a feeling of peace and understanding. Haru, with his wisdom, had planted the seeds of mindfulness in Anita helping her overcome the challenges of envy with grace and resilience. And what do you think of this story, and what are your experiences with envious people? Write it in the comments, and let's talk about it together.